Good evening. China condemns what it calls provocative actions by the United States and the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea. In a press conference, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin says Manila and Washington carried out provocative military activities in the West Philippine Sea with intention of flaunting their military might. Wang describes it as detrimental to management and control of the maritime situation in related disputes. The statement comes after BRP Gregorio del Pilar encountered a Chinese frigate of Occidental Mindoro during a joint maritime exercise between the Philippines and the U.S. on January 3. At least 2 million devotees are expected to join the Feast of the Black Nazareno or Nazarene in 2024 on Tuesday, January 9. Manila Mayor Honey Lacuna made the projection in a press conference on t Thursday. Lacuna says in the past years, around 2 million devotees attended the procession. She says authorities expect the same attendees this year. According to Lacuna, around 12,000 officers from the Philippine National Police will be on hand to provide security. More than 12 ambulances will also be on standby during the feast. The procession was suspended in the past three years due to the pandemic restrictions. President Bongbong Marcos declares January 9 as a special non-working holiday in the city of Manila, commemorating the Feast of the Black Nazarene. According to Proclamation No. 434, signed by Executive Secretary Lucas Bursamin, the declaration will give Catholic devotees in Manila a full opportunity to participate in the occasion and enjoy the celebration. Earlier, Manila Mayor Hani Lacuna, through her Executive Order No. 1, declared the suspension of classes in all levels and local government work in the city of the Feast of the Black Nazarene Celebration. At least 2 million devotees are expected to join the Feast of the Black Nazareno or Nazareno 2024 on January 9. The procession was suspended in the past three years due to the pandemic restrictions. The government's outstanding debt rose to a new record high in November 2023 amid rising borrowing costs and high inflation that bloated the Marcos administration's expenditures. The Bureau of Treasury reports said the state's total debt burden got heavier by 27.92 billion pesos month to month to 14.51 trillion pesos in November 2023. Documents from the Budget Department showed that the Marcos administration expects the total debt load to have ended 2023 at 14.63 trillion pesos. The Treasury says uh, much of the increase in outstanding liabilities in November was due to net issuances of domestic securities, meaning that uh, the government borrowed more onshore than it paid during the month. In November, the state borrowed 171.09 billion pesos offshore through its regular sale of debt securities, such as treasury bonds and treasury bills, and repaid the 45.14 billion pesos it owed to local creditors. But the Treasury says a stronger peso tempered the value of foreign currency denominated domestic securities, which partially offset the increase in local borrowings by 3.87 billion pesos. The Maharlika Investment Corporation approved a capitalization scheme of 125 billion pesos. The MIC, which is the governing body of the Maharlika Investment Fund, held a meeting on Wednesday, January 3. According to the Department of Finance, MIC President and Chief Executive Officer Rafael D. Consing Jr. disclosed that several sa sectors can be tapped for the investment, such as oil, gas and power, agroforestry, industrial urbanization, mineral processing, tourism, transportation, and aerospace and aviation. The DOF says that investments in the MIF would be used to fast-track the country's 197 high-impact infrastructure flagship projects. The Department of Health warns the public against fake messages claiming that a fresh COVID-19 wave is sweeping across Metro Manila. The supposed alert was attributed to a doctor of a famous hospital in the capital region. But the DOH clarified in an advisory that there is no credible evidence or official announcement 
from health authorities supporting the assertion of a surge in COVID-19 cases at the mentioned hospital. The DOH reminds the public to rely only on information from its official pages and the platforms or other reputable sources, adding that misinformation can contribute to unnecessary panic and fear. The DOH says it would press charges against individuals propagating similar false messages. Also on Thursday, January 4, the DOH reported low COVID-19 transmission among Filipinos during the holidays. The low transmission of COVID-19 during the holidays can be attributed to Filipinos choosing healthy behaviors and heeding the call for multiple layers of protection, according to the agency. The Department of Health confirms two more cases of stray bullet injuries from the New Year's festivities. In a bulletin, the DOH says that, 28 year, that a 28-year-old man from the National Capital Region and a 60-year-old man from the Cordillera Autonomous Region sustained wounds from stray bullets, resulting in fractures in different parts of their bodies. The two stray bullet injury cases were reported alongside 26 new cases of fireworks-related injuries, bringing the total to 585. Of this total, 581 were due to fireworks, one was due to Watu C ingestion, and three were stray bullet injuries. DOH also says 88% of those who sustained fireworks-related injuries were males and mostly happened at homes and in the streets. Here's the latest roundup of today's top stories. China condemns what it calls provocative actions by the U.S. and the Philippines in the West Philippine Sea. At least 2 million devotees expected to join the Feast of the Black Nazarene on Tuesday, January 9. And the palace declares January 9 a special non-working holiday in Manila. And these are the stories you need to know today. I'm Neil Mercado. Follow Inquire.net on Facebook, X, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Reddit. For more stories, visit Inquire.net. Good evening.